Hi, welcome to the how to install XBMC on Raspberry Pi video for Boido's Tech Talk. If you've been following the blog or the YouTube channel, you would have seen uh, that I received my Raspberry Pi not too long ago, last week in fact. And uh, I had the first chance to play around with it on the weekend. So uh, one of the first things I did uh, after mucking around with a plain vanilla installation of uh, Linux tailored for uh, an ARM CPU uh, I played with uh, XBMC. And what I thought I'd do is I'd show you what the uh, initial setup uh, process looked like for XBMC or RASP BMC as it's called for the Raspberry Pi, uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how that operates. So here I have the Raspberry Pi. There we go. And I have a SD card already installed here. Uh, with the uh, installation image already burned onto it. So really this should just be a matter of plugging this in and uh, letting the rest of the setup process take care of itself. So let's do that right now. So I'll plug in the HDMI, plug in keyboard on USB, I'll plug in Ethernet cable. Make sure that's snug all the way. And finally, power. And we'll just see what happens here. Okay, so it's connecting to the Rust BMC update server. It's repartitioning the SD card. So by default, you get a uh, one partition with 64 gig uh, assigned to it. I'll just zoom in there so you can see what it's saying. Uh, so if you have uh, obviously a larger card, which we will because we moved away from 64 megabyte SD cards a long time ago, uh, it, it'll allow you to use the rest of the space uh, for other bits and pieces, such as content if you want to play it on the Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think there is also a swap partition. Now, formatting can take a little while. So it's very important that you don't interrupt this, otherwise very strange things can happen if you interrupt it, do another setup process uh, if you reboot and uh, continue on. I found that uh, things like AirPlay uh, refused to work after the first use, it would just crash horribly and uh, really it would become quite useless after that. Um, and also uh, Universal Plug and Play didn't seem to want to work either so very important that you um, let the partitioning go through. So now we're through to downloading the root file system so this can take a little while. Uh, last time if I remember correctly this took maybe about uh, 10 minutes but that's dependent upon time of day, traffic between where I am in the update server, various things like that. So I'll speed this up as necessary. Okay, so that's just taken about 12 minutes there to download the root file system. So now we're on to installing the root file system and it says go grab a coffee. So I'll speed through this as necessary. Okay, so the root file system installation just took under two and a half minutes. Now we're downloading the kernel and bootloader. Uh, so last time I did this, this took just under... Could have been two minutes, but we'll see how long this takes.
Okay, that took uh, shorter than I expected. So we're now installing kernel and bootloader and now we're downloading kernel modules and libraries. So I think this was the component that took about two minutes, but I'm happy to be proven wrong once again. Okay, so we're now installing kernel modules and libraries. And it successfully installed, so setup will continue after a reboot. Here we go. Alright, I'll just zoom out so you can see what's going on. Not that you can really read what's going on. Okay, so there's the logo for Raspberry Pi XBMC, setting up RustBMC for first run. Let's zoom it in again there for you. Updating service management. Okay, now it's downloading the latest XBMC build. So I'm not, I don't remember how often this is refreshed. Uh, but it's uh, not a bad thing to get the latest build. So that's going along there. So at the current rate, that'll take about a minute and a half to finish. So I'll just speed this up for you. Okay, so we're just at the end here of downloading a new XBMC build. 99%. Now we're updating XBMC. Okay, and the update has installed successfully. So we'll just wait for it to boot up. Now we'll zoom out again. I'll turn that light off now. And there we are, XBMC. So, <clears throat> just to uh, show you how it works, um, at the moment I've only got a keyboard connected up, but you can uh, scroll through the menus like so uh, without too much of a problem. So, the first thing I'm going to do is enable uh, AirPlay, just so you can see um, how that works. So what you might find is a couple of add-ons might have been broken to say yes to um, disabling those if it complains about it. Okay so if I go to system No, I wanted services, so we'll go back to services. Okay, so uh, AirPlay, so we need to go through here, um, hit enter to activate it, and that activates it immediately. You don't need to hit a save button or anything. And um, 
we'll exit back out and we'll exit again back to the start screen so there we are now just to show you um, I've got my iPad here so this is uh, this week in tech and if I tap on this button over here you can hopefully see focus focus there we go XVMC Rust BMC so if I tap that and now you can see in the bottom right hand corner here it's working and I should shortly get some sound hopefully not too loud let me just dial that back a bit okay and I'll just hit the play button it's time for Twit the biggest news of the decade for Microsoft a brand new tablet new Windows phone we got a lot to talk about in a great panel this week in tech is next and if I want to pause Nick. there we go pause yes, play from people you trust can't do fast forward it doesn't look like but this that's not twice. not too bad at all audio so uh, there we go that's um, airplay and uh, I exit out of that and uh, you, know, you can always set up um, other bits and pieces as well so um, I've got to get universal plug and play set up properly on my network uh, so I can't show you that but out of the box, you know, you can see that AirPlay is fairly simple to enable. So, there it is. That's the how to install XBMC on Raspberry Pi uh, for Boido's Tech Talk. If you found this video useful, just make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about XBMC for Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi itself, or anything related to those two things, just drop a comment down below, I'll do my best to try and answer it for you. And uh, stay tuned uh, for the review video as well for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but having said all of that, as always, thanks for watching.